I like the song of Solomon. That seemed like a good story for me. But okay. the thing about life, beloveds, is it is unpredictable. So. I found a friend, and he lives under the underpass, and he's very interesting, and I like talking to him. Because he can speak at a heavenly level. I don't like the fact that he lives under the underpass, but he's warm, and he's taken care of, and we had a few drinks last night, and during the day. Everybody else was drinking. Everybody else is drinking around me. Now, the issue has always been, well, I'm serving God. And then they have their ways of getting these pieces of paper that I have to exchange for the things. But I also know if I want it, I can, the spirit will give it to me. And if I don't want it, the spirit won't give it to me. So praying about my life and this perfect life it comes down to did you create a rift between me and you that you feel is so deep and wide it cannot be bridged a lot of times i'll just let you knock on a door <clears throat> until you tucker yourself out and you sit down and you start thinking well i got myself into something how am I gonna get out? I'm not doing anything to anyone, beloveds. I'm doing the exact opposite of doing something to people or doing things for people right now. And the question was raised to me, and me and the Holy Spirit were very disappointed. Well, is it better to live under the bridge or in a psych ward? Well, let me answer that for you. Right now, I'm deciding on what church buildings I'm going to allow the Holy Spirit to flow through. I can guarantee you it will not flow through a psych ward right now. I will not have that inside of me, and I will not have uh, the medications that will come with it inside of me. So... And then once you're in a psych ward, after a few days, you will want out. But if it works the same way I believe it works, you'll sign a piece of paper and they won't let you out. <clears throat> For many, I've used that when they were very close to either taking their own life or um, hurting someone else, but only as a temporary measure for you to think for a second and rest. Um, a quick rehab, if you will. And then I came to the conclusion, are you fighting me so much? that you're trying to come up with any idea rather than simply taking the grace and path that you're supposed to be on for your happiness. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholds him with his hand. I have been young, and now I'm old. Yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his descendants begging for bread. He is ever merciful, and lends, and his descendants are blessed. Depart from evil, and do good, and dwell forevermore. For the Lord loves justice, and does not forsake his saints. They are preserved forever. Oh. The righteous shall inherit the land, and dwell in it forever. 
The mouth of the righteous speaks wisdom, and his tongue talks of justice. The law of his God is in his heart. None of his steps shall slide. All right. Let's pause for a second here. Because I want to do something creative for some people. And I place their healing. And how many of you know I will never heal you? Unless I tell you to do something. If I heal your arm, I'll say, move your arm. Because it hurts still. You have to have something that you're going to connect your healing to. That connects to this. That connects to me, Jesus. And I will not share my glory. How many of you know that it's kind of a blessing that your healing is even available for you to have? Let's do this. If you read um, some YouTube comments, they'll tell you, Jesus healed me. I've been off my medication for two years and I'm full of joy and hope. It is possible and I am doing it. And then I saw somebody say, I connect to this. And I don't know what church teaching that is, but that's not how that works. You connect to me. Divine. So I wake up every day and I pray and I say, Are we talking to her in the spirit yet? And the spirit's like, No. No. Well, how is she supposed to hear us? She can hear us through the video. Okay. Because I've been praying every day. And the spirit's been like, they need to go back down to earth. They need to come down to earth. Their egos are out of control. <clears throat> to have you here helping them and still fight you is not a sane thought process. You guys ever played mercy with God? Yeah, I wouldn't do that. So I'm cleaning up everything. And then a trial run yesterday. Because the more and more my word comes to pass, the more confident I am in speaking it. And then I don't have those periods of uh, not having faith in myself. Which was a huge thing, bringing a lot of people into me that did not have faith. So you have to start there. Uh, many will say, uh, Lord, daughter, your faith has healed you. You're already healed. You're waiting to receive it. Or you need to get rid of the things that are hurting you. And I decided until they figure out I'm not doing anything to them. That I'm not here for vengeance against them. That my vengeance is not what they think it is. Then they can stay down there on the earth. <clears throat> Because it becomes a conflict and an argument, and it, it's not pleasant. And I have no desire for really any unpleasantness. I've had enough of that. So you have to take a stand, because how you treat yourself is how you're allowing yourself to be treated. And then I stopped by my favorite store and I, I talked to people in there and I, they already know my face. I was talking to the manager and I was like, yeah, I got an apartment. I was waiting for the spirit to line things up. So I think I'm going to work there. Like I'd be pretty good at pointing people towards things related to the word of God, right? <clears throat> then you just stand there and bask in the word of God. Seems very appealing to me. <clears throat> and that solves the whole money thing, which is a prevalent issue in my life. 
And then, of course, I want my wife to receive all of her rewards. So I'm working on that every day. Mm. It's really about your life changing, beloved. So this is the this is what the Holy Spirit does when it's in your room looking at you. That's an idea, but it's not going to work out the way you think it will. So why don't we just not do that? And then, here, this is where you need to be. <clears throat> and a lot of times I've been like, will you go get it? <laughs> like, I have it waiting for you. Go get it. Let go of that. Your hands are full right now. Put some things down. And the guy gave me a big bottle of wine and I wouldn't have been able to open it unless the spirit brought me this. So it makes sense. It connects. Well, all right. How many of you played that one game with me where you said, Lord, if you do this for me, I'll do this. And did you do it? And then how many of you said, Lord, I need you to do this so I can do that. And did you do it? And how many you know you can help one person and that one person can hurt five people? The crown comes with the wisdom needed to wear it, beloved. There's only so many ways I can tell you to do what God told you to do. It gets to the point where you even knowing that I'm there is a hindrance to you. Because it turns into, well, he's not going to leave me. I can still do what I want and everything's going to be okay. Well, if you took back your life, then your life is in your hands. If you gave your life to me, it's in the best hands possible. That's all I can tell lukewarm Christians. But at least I'm not yelling anymore. So that, that's a positive. I'm just sadly watching people miss out on things. But I love you always. And there's my answer to that.